So the main agenda we had with this assignment is to give you a real world perspective of what is literally out there and available for you to access when you finish with 10 Academy in the next three, in the next uh, several weeks. So we are going to begin by sharing what alums of 10 Academy have been working on and the information we will give you shares the day-to-day -day tasks that they do on a day-to-day -day basis okay and then we will also share with you some real live open positions in companies that could use the kind of skill sets that you're gaining at the moment and we'll also be exploring what those positions would look like on a day-to-day -day basis okay so that is wonderful so i'm just going to jump right in uh as soon as i'm done with that yatiana is going to come in with uh, how we anticipate your assignment uh, response should look like and then we can head into a Q&A session where you can ask all the questions in the world regarding what is reasonable and what is unreasonable for you to expect okay so uh i'm trying to see for some reason it feels like i cannot share sometimes i worry that i cannot share the exact screen but let us see if i'll be able to pull it off because we had a presentation so uh, we reached out to people from batches three and four no, not batch three and four batch three is especially people from batch three and we reached out to them so that they can tell us okay so what does your job actually look like it's one thing to read a job description it's another thing to actually hear from the horse's mouth what the day-to-day -day looks like okay so I want to share with you some of the feedback that we got we will not share the specific names of of our looms and and who works where but we're just going to share with you uh, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So, uh, I will see if I can share this screen, but God help me. I'm supposed to be good at this, and I usually am, but I don't know. Arun, if you do not mind, let me just share this with you, because you're usually the one who is best when it comes to sharing screens. And then maybe you can share from your side, please. So, uh, psst. okay. There we go. Send. So as uh, we're working on that, we will start. OK, some of the things and and we worked with some of the instructors to see what exactly does your curriculum entail. And uh, is that is that covered in some of the day to day tasks that these positions are asking for? OK, so first things first, we will start with uh, one of our people are works at CUDA. OK, and on a day to day, on a day to day basis, what they do is pull insights from data, automate processes by building models and track production based on model performance. OK, so this sounds a lot like what you guys already do on a day to day basis. I don't know. I want to just get a feel of the room and to know, first of all, are you guys listening or am I just talking to myself? But I want to know uh, how many of you feel like at the end of the 12 weeks, they'll be able to do this just by a raise of hands. OK, how many of you guys feel like you will be able to pull insights? Ah, Behigu, Michael Darko, Bethlehem, CC. Great. Pull insights from data, automate processes by building models, tracking production based model. That is great. OK, so there's another one that at, at Ludio who works as a junior junior data scientist and uh, monitor and update app designs, running A-B tests and uh, on advocacy campaigns how many of you feel like this is something they should be able to do by the by the end of a period at 10 academy do you guys know how to run a b test bethlehem i see your hand uh a number of people michael darko i also see your hand this is encouraging and uh, michael techley i also see your hand this is encouraging mostly because we want you to see everything that we are teaching you are things that people actually need and these are things that are practical and add value to real world businesses. OK, then uh, another one from uh, Team 10 Academy, uh, they set up and maintain our Amazon Web Services 
uh, building scale data pipelines, building web applications, it is safe. How many of you feel like this is something that you can be able to learn and pull off? Show of hands in 12. Show of hands. Ethani, I got you. Michael, I see you. Okay, great. So those are what alums of uh, Dorothy, I see you as well. And for money, those are things that alums of 10 Academy do on a day to day basis for businesses out there and they get paid for it. Okay, so now let's talk about what some businesses out there need in this very moment. And these are positions that were advertised five to 15 hours ago. Okay, so why is that important? Because as Arun keeps saying, you can't set a relationship with someone who's not looking for a relationship. So these people are looking for a relationship, okay? And uh, if you meet the criteria, you know, the checklist that they are looking for, they probably want to get into a relationship with you. So uh, Arun, could you just scrub it down? So one of this, uh, some of them can be done remotely. Some of them, they did not specify whether they have a remote option. I did not include the links for very specific reasons because we want you in your assignments to look for those links, okay? And uh, and when Yatiana is taking you through our expectations on the assignments, she'll also take you through all that, okay? So Arizona is looking for a machine learning engineer, okay? And uh, a lot of it is, a lot of the things that they describe in their day-to-day -day task sounds like a lot of what you guys are being taught at the moment and a lot of what alums from 10 Academy are already doing, like creating data pipelines for future extractions, okay? Deploying machine learning models to production, being part of a team of brilliant data scientists, okay? Uh, collaborating with external stakeholders, you know, be part of the machine learning engineering force that integrates tools and technologies for the team's benefit. How many of you guys feel like these are skills that you can be able to learn and deploy and pull off? Show of hands. I need more people to tell me that they're confident that these are skills that you can be able to learn. Deborah, I see you. Bereket, I see you. UL, I see you. Okay. Behigu and Bethlehem, I see you guys. Okay. So what's the point? This is a job that actually exists. Okay, so if you keep doing what you're doing, this is a job that could be available for you. Okay, so all of the skills that we're learning are very practical and very important. So uh, let's go to Lima Labs. Cindy, okay? can, I ask, can I ask a question? Maybe yes. we, could we ask somebody to explain the key points, data pipelines and deploying models to production? Absolutely. Somebody who understands it? I can make okay. sure that everyone else understands. Okay. Michael, are you putting your hand up or down? I'm talking about Michael Darko because I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, your hand is up. Good. Explain to us what what you mean by this, by this uh, data pipelines. This data pipeline stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, I think what I understand from it is um, actually creating a path um, through which um, the data would pass through till it gets to the end and through the in in and through the process. The, the data will be treated and um, um, the, uh, the data will be fed to a model and all that. So just being able to create that channel and that continuous link for the data to pass through. That's what I understand by um, the pipelines. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you and, for that. And the deploying to production. Okay, and then when deploying is um so actually once you are done with it, once you are done with the model, the model needs to be online so that uh, other people can get access to it so you should be able to put it in a in a way that it can be uploaded on any um site which can host them the uh, model does anyone want to add anything to that around deploying models to production is someone else raising their hand barricade uh yeah can you hear me yes we can hear you yeah, uh, when we say deploying a model, like uh, we build the model, we train the model, and then we have the model. But mm -hmm. uh, leaving it easier is so much difficult. So uh, we need to have APIs that you, other users can access our model, or our company may use it for its website or something like that. So 
need to deploy and access it online. So localizing mm -hmm. the model and building the CICDs part of it and making out there is what we say deployment. Can I give five dollars to anyone who mentions the word testing? Nobody's testing their models. Yeah. <laughs> also, an important part of week zero: the testing side of it, unit testing, other testing. Boring is boring, but essential. All right, Cindy, back to you. Okay, thank you for that, Arun, and thank you for asking that because. It's one thing to assume that people actually fully and completely understand. It's another thing to actually talk about it. Okay. So Lima Labs. Okay. 80% of your Q and, and I know that we mentioned a lot of these things are just machine learning engineer. Okay. There are a number of positions uh, that require uh, that were in data science as well. And uh, having spoken to some of your instructors, the data science bit of it that they're asking for is something that by the end of the program, you should be able to be conversant with. Okay, so uh, let's talk about what Lima Labs is expecting someone in this position to do. Okay, design, implement, and validate AI models, analyze and predict the size of data sets needed for training, image processing, classification, and segmentation, building prediction model for textual or numerical data. Who in this room right now is able to? explain what this skill set essentially requires in a simple way any hands to be raised i know it's not that complicated but uh no need to be shy if you did mystify this who's willing to take us through what it means there were a lot of hands going up previously i'm going to just uh, Boris, <clears throat> Boris Hero, are you here? Come again with a question. Uh, Boris, what do you think Lima Labs is looking for when it comes to this topic system? You know, uh, you know? analyzing and analyzing the size of data sets needed for training, uh, image processing, classification. Do you understand uh, what okay. the topic means? I don't understand. Maybe for predicting the size of data sets. Okay, explain to us what you yeah. How many should be enough mm -hmm. and all that. Okay, is there any other bit here that you understand? No. Okay. I don't understand any. Okay, and thank you for telling us, okay. Uh, Kate, I know I keep calling you out on your Kate, and okay. Kate, are you here? Kate? Hello? Hi, Kate. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, so, does any of this uh, tasks Lima Labs is referring to familiar with you? Um, familiar to you? Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of touched on no, the LDA model that we used. For Jensen, we use it to predict textual data, mm -hmm. but I I do know about image processing or classification. Okay, yeah. so uh, I was told that a lot of your curriculum touches on uh, data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. It's very likely it will become something you will be familiar with by the end of the program. I am uh, not a takey, but I know what image processing is. So uh, I don't know, Arun, do you want to add something else? Yeah, so I think this is an example of a typical job description, but it's very, it's very broad. Mm -hmm. So this, this idea of coming up with multiple solutions to obtain target metrics, it's unclear what they're looking for. Design, implementing, and validating AI models could be that could kind of mean anything. Um, so basically, this is it's a typical job description, um, but it's it's very very broad. It is in the image processing. It seems to be in the image processing space, but it also talks about um, text or numerical data. So this is a job description that you might come across, or the type of job description where um, they're looking for. 
everything. So I would say that it's um, the, the point, the way I would look at um, today's exercise is we want you to understand it's important. We want you to be ready for the real world. And in the real world, you will also come across poorly specified job descriptions. And we have to be able to process and understand um, what we're able to do and what we're looking for. But we want to be able to search in a realistic area and also be OK when somebody is asking for something which is at an entry level um, kind of unrealistic to be okay with that. There's a there's a famous joke um, where somebody, I can't remember the name of the person, he had developed a new technology um, for I think three to four years ago and he posted on Twitter of course um, a link to a job description where the technology that he'd invite in um, invented three years ago, they were asking for five to eight years of experience in that technology. And the so technology was three years old. The technology was three years old. So we need to understand and be able to um, pick jobs that are realistic. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my key point is don't worry if you don't meet all the requirements and don't worry if they don't all make sense because you'd be surprised at how many of these job descriptions are written by um, by committee, and often when people aren't sure what they want, they just keep adding more and more stuff in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for saying that, Arun. The other thing I will also add is that when you look at uh, this paragraph here that's listing the da-da-da-da-da-da, it, it doesn't, when they're listing it, sometimes where this was pulled out from, it, it wasn't just this paragraph alone on its standalone self. There's a lot of context when it comes to the kind of work the company does and some of the things that they're hoping the team achieves and some of the culture. So you can be able to pick up what parts of that job description is something they actually really need or and what part is just fluffy stuff they felt like they needed to add on, add on to it. So they start as well. Okay. So why did we add Microsoft to this list? We added it because we thought it was important that you see what other companies, you know, there's a specific department of Microsoft that was dealing with things to do with the natural language processing, some of which you touched a bit on in week zero. Okay. And uh, a lot of what they're talking about as well is around uh, ability to learn, high performance, rich such skills and everything else. So being able to understand the broad spectrum of not exclusively tech skills that go into being a successful part of this role gives you perspective on some of the skills that you should also be stacking on, on the good, good professional skills to have as well. So for example, this machine learning job at Microsoft in one of the departments of Microsoft. They are someone who's passionate about researching interesting problems around knowledge mining, NLP, uh, relevance experimentation, user understanding, uh, writing high performance code, you know, serving intelligent solutions and everything else. So it, it's a marriage of soft skills and hard skills, technical and non-technical, all of which that can, ha can help you if you master it properly, all of which can help you become very competitive in the world of work as, as soon as you're done. Last but not least, uh, there's this job by Elewa Network that I thought would also be up our alley. Pa platform implementation, uh, it requires liaising with other people in the team as well. It also requires some NLP capabilities. I know you guys touched on that as well. Support of our full stack software development team. So there's also team support that's required in this role. Uh, learning production, assisting with uh, assisting with the production of several activities, including a variety of extra tools that could be also important in, in the job. But as Arun has mentioned, sometimes the tasks may not even be fully and completely related to each other. So if you read the JD in itself, in its entirety, it can give you a lot of context when it comes to what really is important with, the, with that role or what they feel like is a nice to have. But what is important when we are coming up with this, uh, and you, when you just check online, a lot of times this was pulled out from a simple Google search. 
machine learning jobs okay a lot of times it could bring you jobs some of the first listings are jobs that are within your country okay then there's options of remote jobs then it gives you a list of different companies that you could choose to choose from you could you could decide to choose from so the world is full of opportunities but we want to discuss what is a reasonable expectation to have when you graduate oh, on week 12 and which one can you slowly work your way up towards okay so uh we are going to we are going to talk about the whole thing about relevant and uh, not relevant uh what do we call it uh reasonable and what is not reasonable for now not not reasonable ever but for now and uh we're going to talk that, about that once we go into the q and a session but uh yeah tiana are you here yes i can see in the room do you want to go through what uh we'd like the assignment to look like then we'll go to the q and a session can we yes. can we break for questions could we break for questions? Okay, who has any questions? So far. Boris, thanks for turning on your video. It's always nice seeing other people's videos on. Who has any questions so far? Was any questions regarding any of the positions that we showcased? Is this is this very new? Is it to what extent is this um, in line with what people expected? What the what employers are actually looking for? It's pretty quiet in here, guys. I think it's important to be able to discuss. Um, this is an important exercise alongside the coding. We want to prepare for the world of work, so we need to, it'd be good to hear what people are thinking. So Cindy and Yatiana presented a set of job descriptions or advertisements describing real world, real world work. Um, yeah, it's okay, so let, let's proceed then. Yeah, uh, I'm very curious. Before you proceed, Jermaine Rukundo, it's been a while since I had your voice. Are you here? Are you in the room? I can see you're here, but are you here, Jermaine? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Hi, you've been very quiet lately. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, are you following? the conversation yes. Yes, okay I mean, what are you learning <laughs> sorry uh what have you gotten from uh what we've talked about so far and milky i noted i noted your question we'll, we'll address it uh -huh. uh, i'm sure i'm looking at what company is looking mm -hmm. for from us mm -hmm. and i can see mm -hmm. a lot of us do not know what companies are expecting from us so mm -hmm. i think that's what you're trying to explain okay someone has raised their hand uh robert yeah robert yes, thank you. Mm. Okay. can you hear me yes we can hear you yeah um, for me, my question is, what if I don't want the jobs? What if I want to start a company alongside um, uh, using the skills that I've learned here? I see you're focusing on people uh, looking for the jobs, but what if I wanted to, to start my, it was to make a startup around a skill or a several skills that I've learned? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Arun, would you like to address that? Yeah, Robert, so we're not, we, our goal is to prepare people for the world of work. Um, if, of course, entrepreneurship is, if you'd like to go on and pursue that, absolutely, you should pursue that. Um, it's not, it's not something we don't provide entrepreneurship training, um, but we would, of course, you should, you should go ahead and pursue that. But it's not something, so we, we're not, that's not a focus of our program. 
Okay, noted. Maybe we should have an extra class uh, where you can talk about ideas that uh, we can come up with, with the skills that we have learned. Just an extra class. Just thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I think it's a good idea. But so I would say we provide a place where you can meet other people, where you can think about, um, you can meet other people. And for the next three months, you have access to uh, 59 other motivated people. So we, we've consciously decided not to do something halfway. We don't want to, we're not ready to provide entrepreneurship training um, because we are focused on getting people into the world of work. So feel free to organize it if you want to hold your own session, feel free to do that. But we don't want to do something halfway and we're not ready to support, um, to try and create entrepreneurship. Not it, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Behigu, I noted your question, and perhaps it's a good time for uh, Yetiana to talk about the expectations of the assignment. And I'm sure you'll also address Behigu's question when it comes to the outline and uh, and and the and everything that aligns. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so. Um, I want to try to see if I can share the assignment with you so you could see. And in the interim, guys, you could also be asking your questions in the chat box and then we can also address them. Mm -hmm. Yeti, are you able to share your screen? Yes. Okay. okay. So um so um I guess you guys can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay. So now um the requirement is this find at least three jobs that you feel you would be ready to take up by the fourth of October. Okay. First of all, they should be advertised online, okay, with a link available so that you could include the link and we could look through it, okay? And um, it should be specific, not just um, www.google.com forward slash whatever. It should be very specific, okay? And it should be in line with competencies which you can reasonably hope to acquire by the end of batch four. Okay, so basically, just like what um, Cindy has just um, presented to us, although at this point, it seems as if we do not have a very clear understanding of what the job is looking for, but we know that by the end of the three months course, we would have been able to achieve the skills for us to work in that type of job, okay? And remote, remote work, sorry, remote work, it's okay. Now, it would be easy in the outlining of this assignment, it would be very easy for you to create a table, okay? It would be very easy for you to create a table. So let me just um, quickly show you what I'm thinking about. So it would be very easy for you to create a table like this, okay? And um, basically, you just, let's say, yeah okay create a table like this okay and for each category here name of the company so name of the company so let's say um the company's amazon okay and then you have um title of position here And um, let's just say engineer, okay? Um, and then you have link to job adver advertisement online. So the link, we just put the link here. Um, 
whatever.com okay so we can just click the link and then we can view the assignment because it should be something that is currently open okay and searching for someone not a role that has been filled okay and then um in the table you add the location of the job closing dates just like like i've been doing you know closing dates for the application requirements listed on the job application okay experience requirements if there's any if there's none you just put a dash or you put n slash a not available okay some jobs they require certain citizens certain nationalities so if there's anything specific like that you let us know if not you put not available if the salary is stated, you include. If it's not available, you just let us know that it's not available. Okay. Um, analysis of key challenges for you to be success, um, for you to successfully secure the school. This portion here, there's no need for you to include it in the table that you create. There's no need for you to include it there. Now you're going to write at least one or two paragraphs now reflecting on two key things first of all think what are the gaps in your current competencies meaning what you can do now okay versus what you hoped for jobs are asking for so same like what we've just said some of the job descriptions that um cindy talked about for now it's as if we are not competent enough okay but then it's good for us to know that at this point this is my current competency this is what abcd job is looking for so this is the gap that i need to fill or these are the things that i need to learn or these are the skills that i need to hone by the 4th of october so that i can be job ready okay secondly another thing you should reflect on which learnings you acquired as a result of this assignment okay so this is where you're going to talk about analysis of key challenges for you to to successfully secure this role so what were you able to look at and say okay this is something that i need to work on to better myself so that i can secure this job during this assignment what did i learn about the job world out there is it as I was expecting it? Is it different? Do I expect it to be a certain way? Whatever you've learned as a result of this assignment, you add it there in your reflection, okay? Now, challenges that you would face in getting this job, it all falls under your current competency, okay? So basically, you're looking at what you have now, what you've done week zero, week one, probably something you had done before this 10 Academy um, training, okay? And then hoping that by the end of this course, I would have been able to get this certain set of skills. And I believe with this certain set of skill for this job that I have found online, I think that I am a good fit, okay? So basically we don't just want you to just say, I want to be um, a machine learning engineer or, I want to be a data scientist and leave it at that because the goal of this training is to get your job ready okay and yes the jobs are out there but you need to put yourself out there so you need to go one step further i want to be a data scientist okay now i am training to be one i am not yet fully competent but i am tra training to be one so it doesn't hurt for me to just go online and look for job openings you know look at what they're they're um, requiring checking it against what i am doing right now and seeing where the gaps lie and then you think what can i do to fill in those gaps because at the end of the day it really is up to you to fill in those gaps because we can give you all the we can give you all the information we can organize all the tutorials but if you don't go one step further to actually involve yourself in the process it might be a bit difficult for you to achieve it okay so all of this with the table and your one or two paragraphs it should be 
it should be about um 0.75 page to one and a half page long okay so 0.75 means it's almost a page not half of a page almost the page and um one and a half pages long okay so um i want to believe that this outline that i've explained it's clear um is there any question anything you would want me to clarify Anyone? Okay, Thank Christian you. has said it's okay. What can we do with the deadline for the job vacancy? Can I? Can I? I want to add just one point. Um, the, this assignment is is important, but the actual jobs are not useful. Right, the actual jobs that you're going to do research on are not going to change your life. The point is to develop this mindset of getting yourself ready for what industry is looking for. Um, and so all of this exercise is designed to that force you to go out and figure out where are jobs advertised, what do people look for, and to help you organize the types of information that uh, employers are looking for. Um, and then to start to qualify what is a realistic job that I could get. So you will, there'll be a discussion about, you know, am I ready for a data scientist job? And in most cases, uh, it's very difficult to get a data scientist job at this experience level. So I would, I would love to have this tutorial now proceed into a Q&A stage or a discussion less about the assignment and more about what comes after this training and what does the world of what does the the career environment look like for machine learning engineers milky on your question uh about companies requiring experience it's it, we're working on it we've we successfully placed 80 percent last year um and i don't think the experience levels have the demands have increased it is it is a challenge um but you'll be surprised that if you can be productive enough from day one, that many, many companies use experience level as a very simple filter. Um, and companies, job advertisements are almost wish lists as opposed to uh, strict requirements. And that's true sometimes, but not all the time. So if you are a fresh graduate and you're applying for a job at Google, which has PhD plus nine years of experience, you're unlikely to get it. But if you're applying for a job that says one to two years of experience and you have the competencies uh, that they're looking for, then actually I think your options are pretty open. So it is, um, in many ways, it is like a relationship. It's people have their wish lists for what they're looking for in a relationship. But when you meet the right person, then you, those, those lists change. So I would say you should use it to narrow down but you shouldn't completely discount jobs that you are close to being suitable for. So we can go straight into a Q&A on the, either the assignment, but I would really encourage people to think more about the, the why we're here, and we're here because we want to gain competencies that get us ready for the job market. Uh, there's a question Milky had asked about campus that needs requiring experience, and I think uh, Arun, you've answered that uh, very well. Thank you so much for that. Um, the Chimdesa, your question has also been answered about the deadline for the job vacancy being before October 4th. As Aruna said, the job itself is not as important as the mindset and the way it helps you prepare to get a similar job once you graduate. We don't anticipate that you apply for them now, but we want for you to know what an industry is looking for so you can 
you can gain extra practical perspective when you're going through your tasks and uh, and your assignments because you know this is something that people out there need and are willing to pay you for. Uh, Rachel asks, what does it mean by quality of jobs found? 50% are the jobs specific? Are the jobs realistically achievable by October 2021? Do they meet their criteria outlined? Yatiana, would you like to address that question? You're welcome, Chimdasa. Yes, Cindy. Um, Rachel, I was just actually typing an answer to you. So when we say um, quality of jobs found, it needs to be related to the industry. So you can't go online and find a job working as an accountant and send it, send the link, okay? So when we say the quality, we are actually looking for jobs that are related to what we are doing now okay so they should be very specific and um as Aaron has said this should be um a learning step a process okay of looking at what is out there already so let's not just focus on are the jobs going to be available by the end of october just look for something that is currently in the industry something that you believe that by end of october fourth of october sorry if it's still available, that is something that you could possibly work in. That's a field you could possibly work in comfortably. And then you send it to us, okay? Is there any other question? Ah, uh, we stopped launch calls. Oh, Arun, that sounded like a lot of what you used to enjoy doing. Uh, we'll bring polls back. Fumbani, what kind of poll would you like us to bring right this minute? Because it sounds like you missed them. Do you want to unmute yourself and tell us what polls you miss? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go on. I just found the poll very interactive. So, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Ah, okay. We'll we'll pull it off next time. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, reminding us about that. Great. Any other question regarding the assignment or regarding the state of world jobs or regarding anything related to this conversation? Oh, and uh, tomorrow evening we will be bringing one of ten academy alums to discuss what she does on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and uh, what you should, and just extra perspective on what you should expect. And she will be, and I mentioned this in the morning tutorial, but morning stand-up, and uh, what you should use as leverage when it comes to peer mentoring and, and whatnot to ensure that you succeed. Okay, so do not miss out on that. That happens tomorrow from 3 to 4 p.m. UTC after our normal times but yeah anyone it's really quiet here yeah so i'm i'm here to answer questions um so i'd i'd like to take some questions in terms of careers uh both machine learning and engineering there's a couple of prompts that we can start with but i'm sure there are questions so we can just wait for questions Yeah. Uh, evening. Can you hear me, please? Yes. Yes. I can hear your question. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask you: At the end of a training, uh, what kind of support will you give us? So we have our internship program through which we hope to place a good number of people. I'm hesitant to give you a number, um, but we are. We will work with you very actively, um, as actively as we can, to match you into work. So our goal is not to be a train and uh, good luck to you, but uh, train and you can see it's week one. We're starting today um, to get you ready for the job search process. So we want to work with you on your CV, um, preparing a profile site and linking people with employers who are looking for people like you. So I would say we're trying to, our goal is to provide a lot of support. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. And, and, a, and a related point is that our incentives are aligned, right? The remaining, we need 
um, we will be unable to complete batch five unless we place batch four into work. So we have a incentive to make sure everyone is working. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It'll keep us honest. So let me ask a prompt question. Why? How many of you think that you would be ready by October to be a uh, work as a data scientist in industry? Uh, I think I will be ready. Okay. What What makes you think you'd be ready, Christian? Uh, what, what is a data scientist to? I, I think that I will be ready because uh, I'm still learning and hardly. And also, I download some kind of book in Python in order to, to, to push myself and to be, at the end of the training, a good data scientist. But basically, I would like to be a data analysis because uh, I think I have some, some background in, in statistics. So it would be great for me to be a data analyst and to, in order to handle you know, to, to lead, you know, to read how data is going and how data is distributed. Is a data analyst the same as a data scientist? What? Is, is, a, is a data analyst and a data scientist the same thing? Uh, I think I, I did not understand. I did not understand very well your question, please. Is a data analyst and you, so you started, I asked about data scientists. You said yes, but then you said you would be ready as a data analyst. So my question is, is a data analyst the same thing as a data scientist? No, no, no. I, I, I don't think so. Because when I discussed with you yesterday, you told me that uh, no, at the end of our discussion, I go on online and I checked. I noticed that data scientists have some particular things he, he did. And the data analysis also. So, And for me, a data Analysis is a part of a data scientist. Okay, thank you, Christian. Um, Jerusalem? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, the fact that uh, I'll be job reading uh, in October is I think familiar with Python and also machine learning. And the fact that you're uh, tutoring us a deep and intensive um, program, like uh, to, from technical to non-technical things, uh, I find it very helpful, uh, like the technical line, the data science program, and I mean data science program in the non-technical part, of the, the way uh, starting from discipline to organizing and making our city more um, uh, acceptable for the companies who want to hire. Uh, all those things uh, are helpful for us to just be job ready. But as a data uh, scientist? Okay. But would yeah, you, as, do you think as a data scientist, Jerusalem, or as what? As a data scientist. Anyone else who thinks they would be ready as a data scientist? Chimdesa, Kate, Michael? Of course, uh, also as a machine learning engineer, like uh, I've been familiar with um, deep learning. So I think it works for me, but it depends on the three months intensive program at the last. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Michael? Yeah, well, I think I'll be ready by, um, by, the, by the end of the training. For me, to, 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 be, get to, to, um, to be a data scientist, because uh, from, from my understanding, I, I really think um, a data scientist is more of all rounded on, rounded on almost all the edges. And um, he, the person could be able to handle um, any other aspects that comes with it with ease and then little training on it. So uh, when one important aspect of the training for me is, um, one, the, the stand-ups lets you get the feel of working remotely, that way where you have to meet your colleagues and then have to discuss what you do within the day and what, what, what um, went good, what went bad, and 
and then also getting the deliverables. So probably you have your boss telling you, you need to get this done, you need to get this done. And then how the assignments are structured, you would have it, they've listed for you, do this, do this, do that, provide us with this. So kind of, you are, you are, uh, I'm actually seeing it as, okay, the, a client has come in, a client wants this done, so we need to meet these particular deadlines and you have to work so hard to be able to do that. And I think that kind of environment, if it continues, uh, and I know it's going to be like that, if I go through it for, for the 12 weeks, I think I'll be able to handle almost a, a greater part of the pressure which would come with either remote jobs or working in person. Thanks. Jim Dessa? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, I become data science at the end of uh, uh, week 12. Uh, and uh, the data science mostly it is. Uh, his job is for uh, analyzing and processing also model data. Then the companies or the organizations uh, that uh, they use for the creating uh, an actionable plans or some, they use that data for some other purposes. So I think I achieve uh, all this at the end of uh, week 12 if I invest all my capacity and my time uh, for this. Uh, uh, education or training thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so nobody else wants to go. So we're not preparing people. Just has somebody raised their hand. So I'm, I'm just going to give a quick explanation. We, we've we purposely not said that we're preparing people for data science careers. Um, we're rather preparing people to join um, in, in a machine learning engineer role. So the level of experience that's required and the level of, um, and so when I say experience, it's being thrown into a situation where the business wants an answer to, they have a business need, and to be able to break that down into a set of tasks that have to be done. That's typically a role where, for a quote unquote data scientist that would have a team around him or her. Um, whereas a machine learning engineer is joining usually an existing team is, and is helping to productionize um, what's already perhaps been proven through an experiment. And so it's an important distinction. Our key, our key goal is to prepare people to become, um, to take up their first job as a machine learning engineer. And with experience, people can become ready as data scientists. Um, but typically speaking, the combination of statistics, programming, um, and productionization that's required for a data scientist is very, it's unusual that companies would hire people without real world work experience. And that's why uh, machine learning engineering is what we're actually preparing people for. And it's a, there's an important distinction to make. Christian? You have your hand up? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> It's just a question. I would like just to know, uh, please, your your professional career. What did you do to be a data scientist? Can you share maybe in a few minutes, two or three minutes? Yes? Thank you. Yeah, so I'm I am not a data scientist at all. Yababel is the data scientist on our team. I'm an electrical engineer, and I've been working um, in the area of international development through education. Um, that's that's my approach. So consulting, international development, and education. Uh, Yababel is the technical part of the team. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Rachel, you have a question. Um, so Rachel, I think absolutely you're you will be ready. Um, data, machine learning engineering requires quite a significant background in software engineering. But there are allied careers, both as in the MLOps field, but also in the data engineering field. And so I think it's important to, um, it's important as we go ahead, and this is why it's a really useful exercise, especially for people without a software engineering background, um, to look at what industry is actually looking for. Um, in our experience, machine learning engineers tend to be people with software backgrounds plus machine learning engineering experience. Whereas data engineers are people who don't require the same level of uh, software experience. And so I think that's that's important. Elizabeth, it would be great if you can share those slides um, in the resources channel. Ah, somebody's just asked that. 
somebody's just made that point. So this exercise is, as said, if every for all the people who think that they they would be ready as data scientists to take up a data science role by October, I would encourage you to look at what industry is looking for, and we we cannot create jobs. We can try and link people up with jobs, but educate yourself on what industry is looking for. Now, to start off as a machine learning engineer doesn't mean that in a couple of years you wouldn't be ready for a more senior role. You can't doesn't mean that you can't graduate into a data science role. But the difference between a job and a career is a job is one step on your career journey. And you have to keep in mind what it is that you want to go on to be. And so even if you want to be a data scientist, recognize that that might be a multiple year journey and you may need to start in a different role, which is on that path. Any other questions? So Michael's seeing you, uh, just giving other people an opportunity. Anyone else have any questions? It's really important. We want to make um, our success will come when people are working. And so we want everyone here to have a very practical view of what industry is looking for. And so that's why, for me, this is one of the most important assignments we have. OK, Michael? Um, yeah, so uh, well, from your experience with um, training uh, people for machine learning and um, jobs, I'd want to know if you might have a, 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 a greater overview of how staffs are ongoing in the industry. When you look at um, the readiness and then the, um, the willingness of um, people to get into uh, machine learning, particularly con concerning Africa, uh, how would you track, would you be able to quantify it for me in about in the next 10 years, in the next six years? I think that would be um, very good as well to also take it, put it at the back of our head whilst we are crafting the path we will be taking for our careers. So it's, I think it's a good question. It's not an easy question to answer. Um, so one is, I don't know if you need to limit yourself to Africa. You have um, re remote work is opening up and for the majority of, there are a lot of companies anywhere in the world um, who are looking to hire machine learning engineers or people in the sector. So I would look globally. I think that in Africa, the sectors are, it tends to be, it tends to be larger companies concentrated mostly in Nigeria and in Kenya, uh, companies who are looking to hire or who have teams large enough where they would be looking to bring on a more junior person. Um, that being said, I think that this field is growing. It is evolving, but I think that it is probably, and don't quote me on this, but it's somewhere, it's somewhere like the software development field from five to 10 years ago, where five to 10 years ago, software was, everyone had it, but not everyone is necessarily applying it in a professional way. Um, and nowadays, I think every company has a software team or a software department which needs to be professionally competent. And I think the number of things that one can do with a machine learning um, in the machine learning field will continue to grow. So it is, well, I can say today, just before, um, just before coming here, I was looking on LinkedIn Jobs, which is a big job site in the US, and so I'm looking right now, there are machine learning engineer in the, just in the United States today um, at all experience levels. There are 14,000 advertised jobs on one site. So there's, there are really a lot of jobs that are advertised. So I think the sector will continue to grow. And um, with the training that we're providing you and the demonstrability of your skill, um, you would be ready to take up not all of those jobs, but a good subset of those jobs. And if you follow that career pathway, um, you have the opportunity to build, uh, to kind of write your own ticket. Nabil? Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Okay. Yeah, my question will be, uh, is junior, junior data analyst also a higher level for us at the end of the three months? 
So that that's not a job description that I'm familiar with. Um, so data analysts, to me, it's a question of what, how much freedom one has. So a data scientist is generally the person who has to design the experiment and run the team. So Yababel is a data scientist where he combines the level of statistical knowledge along with the programming and the level of deployment and can tie that into what the business is looking to develop. Um, and this, this concept, and I think those of you who have been on the tutorials, you will, you'll start to see that he has a, a statistical fluency which takes time to develop. Um, and data analysts generally are looking backwards, what happened in the past, and that's where the statistical knowledge is not as important. Um, so a junior data analyst, yes, I think absolutely you'd be able to, you'd be able to do that. Um, it's the predictive, predicting the future that becomes very difficult, and that's where the statistics comes on board, and that's why the machine learning engineer position, generally speaking, takes something which works in, might have worked at small scale in a lab, and they try and um, build that into a system which works in production. So I'd say junior data analyst, absolutely. Um, data analyst, absolutely. But I think you guys should aim higher than that. So it will be OK, yes, if we list that kind of jobs? I think that it's too easy. I think it's too easy. Okay. You, should go for a more, you should go for a more difficult job. Oh, OK, OK. Anyone else? We're, we're basically out of time. We have a comment from Elizabeth. Does anyone else have a last question before we wrap up? No? OK. So I would just encourage everyone to continue. I'm glad to see uh, so many people here. It's an for me, it's it's an important assignment because if we don't know where we're going, it doesn't matter which way we go. Um, and so keeping the why in mind is very, this is the start of us keeping the why are we here in mind. So I'll hand back to Cindy and Yatiana. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Arun. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Um, uh, in future, I want to encourage you to do, now that you guys have peer mentors, just encourage your peers, if they can join these sessions, I think they're very helpful, absolutely. So, I don't want to talk too much because I love the sound of my own voice. Yeah, Tiana, do you have any parting shots you'd like to give about this assignment before you close the day? Um, just that, um, just try as best as possible to have an open mind, try to look for things online and don't focus on having a job right now. Focus on learning the skills that the jobs you've searched for that they already require right now. And then by October 4th, who knows the job you might have, okay? So that's why we're always here. We're working with you. We're not going to leave you halfway, okay? And yeah, have a good day, everyone. Have a wonderful, delightful afternoon. See you guys at tomorrow. Stand up in the interim. Rocket chat is open, and so are the, and so are your instructors. Doodles. Bye, everyone. Bye.